Alright YouTube, today we're going to be taking a look at a, another defensive scheme and uh, one one of the concepts I was actually running for a long time in Madden NFL 13 I wanted to share with you before Madden NFL 25 comes out because I think it's somewhat similar concepts as far as the way it will work next year. So what I'm going to present to you guys today is a Tampa 2 or a cover 2 style of a defense and how it can be ran in Madden. Now one thing I want to again say before we get into this, is I'm not guaranteeing success. I'm not guaranteeing that you're gonna, you know, shut people out with this. But I am guaranteeing that if you stick to the rules that I go over today, you're gonna have some success. Now, my defensive audibles, we're gonna set them up here for you. Uh, what I like to do is I like to have a couple of different options here, especially when I'm on a Tampa two type of approach here. I got this, uh, the Sam Blitz two. The Sam Blitz two is gonna be a nice cover two style of a blitz that I can run, and it's from a four three under and a four three stack. I got the Will Fire two. You see it's a left side blitz and it's also a different coverage behind it so they're going to work in conjunction with one another. Also from the 4-3 stack, I think it's in the 4-3 stack, let me see if I can find it here. It's the, is it in here? Uh, nope, it's not in the 4-3, okay. It's, uh, but one of the other defenses I want to talk go over today is the, uh, the, the CB Dog Zone. Um, I'm going to present that concept to you today. Uh, and how it can be, it's also, I mean, it's a cover two, it's like a perfect Tampa two style of an approach with a couple hot routes that we're going to show you. Um, out of the 4-3 over, this uh, fire zone two is a nice uh, zone blitzing type of a cover two scheme we can use to stop inside running position, inside runs, and then again, you know, the 4-3 stack, and one of the better things about it is this uh, Thunder Smoke two. The Thunder Smoke two is one of my favorite plays in the game. And uh, we're going to discuss why it's such a good play. And then we're also going to talk about, you know, how you can use these plays to really lock down your opponent. Now, your base formation is going to be the 4-3 stack. And we're going to go over some stuff out of the 4-3 stack before we get into that. So, uh, first off, we're, we're in the New York Giants. Uh, we're in the New York Giants team, and we're using the Cover 2 playbook. And uh, what you need for the cover two is you need two ends that can absolutely just be ferocious on the outside. So we have you and your and Pierre Paul. And then you need defensive tackles. You need one beefy guy, and then you need one super explosive defensive tackle, someone like a Justin Tuck. If you wanted to even get more streamlined, you could go with Chris Canty over Linval Joseph. But I like Justin Tuck and Joseph. At the linebacker positions, your your left of screen linebacker. This is your, I think this will be considered your your weak side linebacker. Um, he needs to be a good zone cover. He needs to have speed, and uh, he doesn't necessarily need to be able to stop the run. The main thing you want to look for in your outside linebackers is a, is a combination of athleticism and zone coverage. So we have Michael Boley at one outside linebacker, and then at the other outside linebacker, this was a toss up between. Keith Rivers and uh, uh, Jaque and Williams, but I think overall, for what we're asking this guy to do, I think Williams or Rivers can certainly do that, uh, and he can also be a lot better in terms of that automatic hit stick with that 88 hit power, and you know you have some coverage here. 65 is not too bad, and then at the middle linebacker, this is going to be your best overall. This is your user player, of course, but also I like to put you know my fastest dude there so I can really lurk that middle. Uh, in the cover two defense. Now, once again, you know, zone coverage here is 72. If you guys don't want to use her the middle linebacker, then you might want to place um, Bowley at middle linebacker and Williams at the outside so you have your best cover in that middle of the Tampa two. Okay, so that's what we have there. Let's talk about the corners. And at the corner positions, we need guys that can just flat out, you know, when we ask them to tackle, they need to be able to tackle. And when we ask them to man cover, they need to be able to man cover. So it's not necessarily about speed. They're, they almost seem to be like a strong safety that can uh, cover a little bit in man. And as you see here, we have Corey Webster. We're actually going to make an adjustment on our, our corners here. I'm going to put Terrell Thomas in at the other corner. So I'm going to make an adjustment here. See, uh, and the reason is because now you have two 
six foot corners. They're not necessarily fast, and they don't have to be in the Tampa two, but they have a uh, a ton of uh, explosive ability here with the catching, as well as the jump and just an overall ability with tackling is there, hit power, everything. I mean, block shedding is the main thing, and then of course the man coverage, zone coverage is very effective here. Obviously, you could put uh, Prince Mukamura in the slot. Excuse me, in the slot if you ever want to go to a nickel, but I like to put. Uh, try on over Mukamura in the slot because we're going to put a Mukamura at free safety in this defense. So now we have a 93 speed on one side and we have an almost uh, almost a 90 speed at the other side uh, covering those two deep blue zones in the Tampa 2. And then my backup uh, is usually just some kind of Madden gym like a, uh, a Tyler Sash uh, or something like that that I can just use or if I need if it, if it comes worse to worse. But you see, there's my depth chart for the defense for the for the Giants. Now let's get into the play breakdowns. Oh, okay, so if an off and the the key to the Tampa two is the pressure from the front four. You know, and and, and you're let me just take a let me just show you what I mean by this. And we're going to show you the one thing that usually will beat cover four is uh, a four vertical style of approach. Excuse me, the Tampa two. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out in our cover two sink here. And we're just going to base align it, and we're going to re-blitz Pierre Paul to get him on a straight down blitz angle. And I like to shade the coverage out so that those safeties play the deep half a little better. And we'll spread our linebackers just for fun. Now the key to this defense is, if you look, I've got to get the ball deep, 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 right in that region. But you see he gets deep enough to hold. So now the offense is forced to put a drag on the field. Okay, so once they put that drag on the field... Again, same play set up here, just pretty basic. What's going to happen here is you see the triangle dude is going to dot up that up that seam. So we need to count. So what we're going to do is we're going to put everybody on the defense is going to be put in a quarterback spy. And this is for timing purposes only. This is not for play purposes at all. Okay, all this this has to do with timing. And we're thinking about the 15-yard line is when we need to throw the ball to Harris. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and we can throw that ball. Okay? So that's about the timing of that route. And that's the one route that's really going to give the Tampa 2 trouble. So we need to figure out a way to get our blitz in in under three seconds. Okay? So what I'm going to present to you guys today is spread the line. You're going to crash them out, and then you're going to re-blitz both defensive ends. And then what I also will do out of this sometimes is maybe just re-blitz Joseph down on a straight down angle. And now you see 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, boom, he's block shutting, he's there. So they have about three seconds. Another thing that you can do with this is if you widen, if you manually, and this is actually some time, takes some time to actually do, you need to manually move them over one step and re-blitz them, and then obviously you want to re-blitz or quarterback spy Joseph, and then you could do the same the, the stock stuff with your coverage. You could also base align your defense twice here, and you see, uh, or you could re yellow all your linebackers, and you can base align your defense twice. And you see how they get those exotic drops. That's something you can also do. But, anyways, what I wanted to show is when you know, see how much faster they get up field. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very subtle, but it's a big deal in terms of what this defense is going to be able to accomplish. Now, once again, you know, something awesome you can do is overload blitzes. So, crash your line to the right, re-blitz your defensive end on the right, and you see he gets upfield so much faster and is about maybe even a second difference in terms of the blitz getting home. You can do the same thing to the left side of the field. As you see here, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. He actually got held up there, but you see the concepts are working. And another thing you can do, you can sh uh, shift your line. So shift your line to one side of the field and crash them. And now you see you should come free off the edge. You see like that? And then you get that, that angle. And then you just you just you block shit and you go. So that's some concepts. Another thing you can do is, is crash your line down. And uh, what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a bunch of stunts in the middle of the field. As you see, it's really good against draws, but boom, just a bunch of stunts stunts and trying to get these blitz angles to work a little better. Another thing that I've been doing more recently is putting my defensive tackles on contained and then re-blitzing both of my ends, and I like to move my ends out one step. And we're going to time this again. You see those defensive tackles just go to the outside, and boom, block, shed, sack, boom. And the cool part about that is we don't have to send pressure. So 
Uh, and then we can do that from any play. So we can do it from two men under the same kind of blitz angles um, that we can create here. So we can put our, con our, our contains up there and then move our manually move our ends out one step here. And all we have to, all I like to do is I like to give inside position away just so that they can't attack me to the outside. So a situation like this, and, you know, I kind of have the middle of the field. It's mine again, so I'm just roaming the middle. And then bam, you see that, you see that quick block shed that he gets on that outside. Let's take a look at the in, instant replay here to show you what's like actually occurring in this play. So you see the, the blitz angle and the wideness of the dude allows him to get so much more field. If you see here, uh, so he's at the 33 yard line when he's attacking. Uh, and the quarterback's about the 37. So he's already three out of the seven yards upfield. He has to be, so he makes a quick get off the block and go. Now let's take a look at a standard blitz angle and where it attacks the quarterback. So I want you to mainly just take a look at you and your here because he's on a stunt. Let's, let's just go to it under. Let's go to it under. So here's your standard blitz angle for fourth and stack. And you see he gets him at about the 31. And, and again, you get a quick block shed, but the reality is you're engaging the, the, the tackle much, much earlier than you want to be. Uh, you're not getting that upfield. You see he's engaging at about the 32. You want him to engage about the 34. Uh, that's kind of my goal. So, again, same stuff here. And then just re-blitz your dudes. Contain. I like to contain sometimes. Sometimes you can just re-blitz all of them just straight down. Uh, to get one-on-one -on -one matchups, and then bam, you see that quick block that he gets on that edge is, is pretty good. So, in, the, in theory, all we have to do is take away their read for long enough to for, for that blitz angle to come in, and then you can see you can do some stuff with the stunning and whatnot out of the Tampa 2C. But, so what I'm going to present today is, you know, a gambling defense that obviously, and the cool part about Cover 2C this year is if you shade the coverage out, and then what we can do is we can manually move Webster in, and we can manually move Thomas in. And, and then you could basically, you know, what you have here now is what you could do is you could rehook Rivers and rehook Bully, and then you can base the line twice. You see how they go right into this little V area? And that's kind of big deal because now all that's really open is that deep, deep route that you're dropping into. So essentially if you put him in a deep blue zone, then all that's going to be open, if you take a look at the flow coverage, so the drag is going to be open. This is basically what's going to happen at the end of the play. So what we could do as an adjustment is we could just simply drop Joseph here into a hook zone. And if we do that, um, the cool part is that's kind of locking everything up. So let me show you what they're going to do. A lot of people are going to put uh, Bryant on a drag and maybe block the running back to kind of hold the pressure off a little bit. And you see the drag's there, but you're only getting five, six yards. And that's kind of the theory of the Tampa 2 is the ability to kind of just make an offense have to work upfield. Now, the cool part about this is these are our base plays, and we can always go to this uh, cover two buck. And the cover two bucks uh, deal is we want to get that delayed bump and run. So what we're going to try to do here is we're going to manually move our corners back a little bit, just back, just straight up and to the right, maybe two steps, so that they line up over their dudes. Okay, so you see that. Now the key here is once again get your get your get your ends up field, and you're gambling on this. This is a gamble type of a play, and what you're gonna see here is that the snap of the ball, they're gonna look like they're in hook zones, but they're not, and they're really in flats, and those would routes would be open. What you can do off of this, and this is so important, is you could basically say, okay, this is a jailbreak type of situation. So this is the thing you've been establishing that these safeties are gonna go to the deep deep quarter uh, or deep half of the field. So what, excuse me, what you can do off of that is when you see their, you see how they're over, over the dudes here. What we can do off of this now is we can put our corners, we can manually place our corners into deep blue zones. What this is going to do now, and we can shade our coverage and you see that, and then now, bam, we have a super exotic look here, and I would re-blitz and then re-hook the linebackers. And if you baseline your defense twice here, you see these awkward drops that these safeties are going to get? It's almost like they're going to the deep blue zone, but then they're going to immediately jump down on anything quick. So all you have to really look out for in this a situation like this is the deep middle. Once again, deep middle, and that's what you got with your user player. So we're, make, we're taking our weakness and now making it our strength, 
And now you see there's just nowhere to go quick enough. They can't get rid of the ball. And that's kind of the theory of the cover two sink, or not the cover two sink, but the cover two defense as a whole. So that's a mixing type of approach. Next thing I want to talk about is my run defense from the cover two um, out of this play. And it's a stutter smoke two. And all I do is spread my linebacker, spread my line so that it looks the same. And you see these blitz angles uh, that are created on the outside now. It's really good for stopping the run because they're slanting inward. And so you see here, we're going to return a quick ISO. The blitz from the linebacker is automatically going to blow up the inside run so you don't have to worry about that too much. And then your, as far as off tackle, that's probably, I would say that's probably the biggest concern. And it's really not that bad of a deal because, again, you're spreading. And the cool part is here, we're going to run a, a misdirect or a, a misdirection type of a run here. You're going to see, try to get off tackle, boom, quick block shed, the blitz angles create it, stop in the backfield. So just so you know, kind of, you're going to be able to stop the run out of the Thunder Smoke 2. You just need to call it at the right time. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the Thunder Smoke 2 as a pass defense. Uh, this is my third and short pass defense, and what I'll do if I think they're going to pass is I'll just re-blitz both defensive ends, and you see these blitz angles that are created off the edge. You, you, what's going to happen is the tackle should go with the defensive ends, and what we're going to see here at the snap of the ball is you see you get those quick angles, and it's so crucial because a lot of times what we're giving up it, it, basically what we're giving up in this defense is quick drags, quick slants, stuff like that underneath stuff that they should be able to get. Even the flats, a lot of a lot of times you'll see them force the flats against this. And uh, when you basically do this, what you get now is you you get the same exact look. You don't get the best pressure from this. But what you get is if they try to throw a quick drag, oh, pick, pick, uh, pick on a good day. I mean... You're not throwing quick on this, so that's why it's such a good play for, you know, a mixed-in play for third and short. Once you've established the fact that you're going to give those routes up, and then you take them away. It's Again, it's a game of chess, guys. You're not going to be able to stop everything, but you can obviously certainly stop some things. Another thing you could do with this, if you wanted to make better coverage of it, is just put your middle linebacker in a deep blue zone. You don't even have to use her anybody on this play. You could use a rush or something, but, you know, this is the kind of the deal because you want to get that delayed bump, hopefully, animation on the outside, so you move them up a little bit so that it's deceiving and they don't know what's going, ha going to happen. And if they try to start throwing quick stuff like drags and slants, you're going to get an interception or a bat down, as you see there. I mean, the dude's in position to make a play. It's up to him to make the play now. So that's kind of the Thunder Smoke, too, while we look at that. And then a man counterpoint to this blitz. Thunder Smoke, it's our blitz audible, actually. All we have to do out of this play is re-blitz both defensive ends, put our middle linebacker in a yellow zone. Excuse me, we also have to spread our line and crash them up. But you see this right here. So this is basically what you create. Uh, spread line, crash them up, and then just re-blitz both defensive ends. I also like to re-blitz Joseph. And then what I'll do is, again, this is a man counterpart. So again, you want to make it look like you're in cover two. So that's why the baseline function is so effective this year. And we're just going to shade. We love to shade outside uh, so that they, they're forced to throw into our user to player. And this is a situation where now you're kind of on an island, but you're calling this in a situation where you've been established in other, uh, other coverages. So now there's a really quick pressure coming in now, and they don't know what to do. And that's kind of the cool part about this defense. And then another thing you can do, again, we always like to mix the two men under. The CB Dog is, oh, no, this is your main. If you know they're going to pass, pass defense. And all you're going to do on this is the same concept we've been doing uh, all, all the whole time here. We're just re-blitzing our defensive ends. And what I like to do is either man up on the outside receivers here or put my corners in hook zones. And what this is going to do is those purples are flow coverage technique. Flow coverage technique is going to you know, take away the flats and the quick, quick underneath stuff. And then you have... The deep blue zone, again, you're using the middle linebacker, so you can put him in like a, a flat so that it makes the coverage better on the right side. But you always know you're using this part of the field. So if they try to throw it, no, and then you get a quick block shed sack. So, bam, uh, another way to run the cover, too. And then lastly, um, you know, the will fire, too. This is where we're going to start bringing our zone blitzes out of this defense. And this is a situation normally on, like, third and long or... Or even, you know, just kind of a mix in pads. And so what you do is shade coverage out as always. Spread line, spread linebackers. You don't have to crash your line out on this. You just need to reboot both defensive ends. And as you see here, um, oh, we got picked up. Oh, actually you do because we're on the left side. So since we're on the left side of the 
defensive line out of fourth or sack, you do have to spread line and you do have to crash them up. And then that's all you have to do, I think. That should be all you have to do. The blitz angle should do their thing here. No, oh, because the you gotta reboot the linebacker. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. NCAA, you don't have to do any of that. You just have to spread the line. Uh, but anyway, spread line, crash them up, and reboots the left of screen linebacker. You could do that all from your global settings. Um, so, and then see here, we're gonna come off the edge with that linebacker. He's gonna come free. So, pretty good, pretty good blitz there. So you can use that as a cover two seat counterpart. And then again, you can run your global pressure. There's no reason you can't do that. Out of four three stack, we know spread line crash up, reboots both defensive ends or both linemen on the right, and then you got pressure off the right edge. And the cool part about this is your user is doing the linebacker all the time, so you could just you know kind of jump where you're weak at. And the same thing could be said for any cover. So you could come out in the cover two buck and put both outside linebackers. Uh, just reboots both outside linebackers here. Yeah, you're in cover two shell, but at the same point, guys. You know, this is kind of cool because you're just lurking in the middle, and that's what's open. And so you're you're basically turning your weakness into strength out of this. So those are all global setups out of four through stack. We've already went over in another video. Try to leave a link in the annotation for you. And then last but not least, sand blitz two. Uh, what I like to do out of this is just run the the right side pressure. So I just spread my line and I crash them out, and then I re blitz the uh, defensive ends on this play. And you see, it's a cover two style of a uh, of a look. And what we could do with this is we could maybe even run like a hybrid. So we could put the corner on the left and the yellow, leave that corner on the right in a, in a flat zone, and then just lurk on that side of the field because you know that's where you're weak. And then the pressure's coming in so fast. And it's just very difficult to read this defense, which is the beauty of it. So that's what I got for you guys today out of the, out of the cover two playbook. Uh, just a very simple cover two defense, but it's very effective. If you master your reads, you master your hot routes, it could be very deadly. Thanks for checking out today's video, guys. If you guys like this video, make sure to leave a like rating below. Also, if you enjoy my content and you would like to see just some, sometimes I tweet out random playbooks or random thoughts, uh, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Uh, I, you know, I try to tweet a little something every day. Uh, also, make sure to follow my blog. I'm going to leave a link to the annotation to my blog. Um, that's actually gotten more active as we as the season's uh, drawing closer. And so if you guys want daily blog posts, sometimes two or three blog posts a day, make sure to check out my blog on um, blogger.com uh, slash madtips365. And I'll try to leave a link in the annotation for you guys. Also, one last thing, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you enjoyed this content. Uh, we have a ton of more uh, Madden NFL 25 and NCAA 14 content coming on the on the way. Also, guys, if you have any other questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.